very little frustrates me in trucking because I don't allow things to bother me. But there's one thing I really wish would change immediately. of the tubiest the best youtube subscribers on the planet that's you and i'm 50 plus so you bet you rarely hear me bitch and gripe about anything but you know one thing about trucking uh that is a serious frustration to me it's the way they mile the load basically uh, you know from the shipper to the consignee you don't get paid from the shipper to the consignee you get paid from zip code to zip code and that's been around for you know ever you know and I get it you know post GPS you know when it was maps and that sort of thing and you know getting precise mileage and things of that nature was you know either so much more difficult or they just didn't give a damn but now you know you can easily tell the miles between your your shipper and your final that, that you know you'll get a load and a load may have uh, you know 60 miles of deadhead where you would drive from where you're at to go to the uh, shipper and then let's just say a thousand miles between the the shipper and the consignee the the final destination thousand miles Put it in your GPS, put it in your Ray McNally or whatever it is. Actual miles, maybe 1,100, you know, 1,095 or something, you know. And so you drive those extra miles for nothing. You don't get paid for that. You know, that is just so frustrating. And if you think about it, if you do three loads or you do... If you do uh, 3,000 miles a week, let's just use that for a round number. Um, most companies, if you say, hey, look, you know, the, the difference is over 10%, and then they'll pay you that. But 9%, they won't. So for easy math, easy math, if you did 3,000 miles in a week, you, you could do 300 miles for free. You know, that's that's some coin right there. And then you do that, you know, each week of each month, all year. Do the math times every truck driving around. I mean, it's just it's just insane. It's just completely frustrating to me. And I I, I just don't understand how that can still be legal. You know, I mean. It, it, I, it, it's just really frustrates me. There's a lot about uh, trucking that I just, I don't bitch and gripe and get on here and complain about a lot of stuff. So, you know, if I'm the only person you watch, you probably think trucking is, is the jewel, you know, go ahead, just go out there, burn fuel, make money. But, uh, you know, there's just some some, you know, things about it that is stuck in the, you know, 18th century or some shit. I, man, I, I believe some of these rules ain't changed since, since you know, these, the trucking has begun, you know? Maybe we need Hoffa back or some shit. I don't know. But it's, 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 just, it's just crazy. You know, another thing, breakdown. 
it's, it simply amazes me how expensive these trucks are. And these some bitches, it will break down. They are not reliable, period. I, I, you know, I, they, I was going to come up with some ridiculousness. But the fact that these some bitches are not reliable. You don't know if the next morning you're going to get up and somebody's going to start and run. Or in the middle of your run, it's going to shut down. And I promise you, you cannot get on the highway and drive 100 miles and not see at least five trucks on the side of the road. And I'm not talking about old trucks, okay? You see, these are company trucks, which, you know, they don't keep old trucks. You know, I was talking to a, uh, a guy uh, at the yard, uh, and his truck, his 2020 Kenworth, no. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna give a video, but Metal just bought off like 30 new uh, Freightliners, and you know I thought there was you know all uh, Kenworths, you know, you know that they everyone I've seen has been Kenworths, a couple of Freightliners, but they were like old and they're phasing them out. But these are brand new. So, hey, you know. But anyways, this Kenworth uh, had some major issues. It just shut down on the dude. You know, the transmission kicked out of gear. And, you know, he had to limp it into a Loves. And then they had to tow it from there to a, a, a Kenworth deal. Dude told me his truck has been down for, uh, I think, I think at, that, at that time it was two weeks. Can you imagine being down for two weeks? And why? Why would your truck be down for two weeks? This is a a, a source of income. It's not like your car at home where they can just give you a loaner and you drive back and forth to your real job. This truck is your job. So when it goes down, there's no money. So how can these truck makers, these builders, build these trucks for so many years and still can't make one that that at least give you 200,000 miles of trouble for you driving. You know what I mean? Your own car, your car doesn't break down in 30,000 miles with a major catastrophe. And that's what happened in these trucks. I just cannot believe it, man. This place, this... Don't get me started on the maintenance, man, and, and these these shops where you go to get your, your truck worked on oh my god you'll be there forever and better hope that when you get it back it's working because them guys don't know what the hell they doing that's just a fact that's just a fact it's just I'm frustrated today and <clears throat> my truck wasn't it wasn't really broke down um, the Kim's system in this truck, the Kim system is Kenworth Idle Management. Uh, uh, it is, um, it's called um, uh, with Freightliner, oh crap, now I draw a blank, is uh, Optimized Idle in Freightliner. I had Optimized Idle in, my, in the Freightliner that I had when I was with, with uh, Swift, and I liked it, man. It was, it worked, didn't fail, you know, I can run everything I needed to run, and when the when the load got or batteries got low, the truck would crank itself up and charge the battery back up, and it would, you know, you can run your bunk heater, do everything you want all night long, and not have to worry about the truck not starting the next day because it would just crank itself up. Um, it didn't do that all night. So the plus to that is it works and it will start the truck up and run all night, you know, run and shut back down. The downside is every time it starts, you wake up. Every time. <laughs> if you don't wake up when it starts, you're going to wake up when it shut off because the truck goes and you're going to wake up. So that has some downside to it, but it's it's uh, the cam system is a a new system that Kenworth is using. Um, the, to, it's like an electric APU, basically. So, mine wasn't working. So, uh, when I got it back, the tech says, I'm going to show you how to use it. So, he takes me outside and he shows me the same thing I've been doing. 
So I haven't used it. I haven't had to because it's uh, very comfortable, the temperature. So I hadn't had to run the bunk heat or anything right there. I hadn't turned, had to use the AC, so the truck hasn't had to run. But I'll be a betting. It's going to have the same issue. It's the same. But it is what it is. You know, I just... I, I, I'm not on here just to be bitchy, 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 bitchy. But I, I, I've I always told you guys all the fun and I showed you all the good pictures you see. And all, you know, you know, this is amazing stuff. You get to witness while you're out here. It's pretty cool. You, you get a good, it's a good experience. But there, there are some downsides to it. Outside of missing your family and being gone, you know, I wish they would pay us properly. I wish these guy, goddamn trucks wouldn't break down. And they do. And they do on a regular basis. And they dig in your pocket when they do. Because you only get on to get breakdown pay. Which ain't shit in comparison to what you're going to make when the wheels are turning and the fuel is burning. Uh, I, I know y'all got enough of me. Ubiest, thank you for letting me vent. Deliver undistracted. Here's your boot.